dangerous world of Twitch. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna shock all of you. I'm a gambling addict. And I'll pay back. Genuinely, give me two months and I can pay back. That nigga is. Nigga ran up what? 250? Slicker hell. That nigga. Listen, bro. Ran up a bag. Pay back. Genuinely, give me two months and I can pay back. And this guy has flown down to her city to try and track her down. And while doing that, even broke into another streamer's house while they were streaming. He was actually on his way to my house with a knife. I was never able to be genuine with people anymore after the fact that I cheated on my girlfriend with people who I didn't realize were even in the first place. So before we get into this video, I just want to say thank you. Oh, by the way, shout out to this nigga chat. You know, he commented on my, uh, one of my videos reacting. He's like, yo, appreciate you reacting. W, man, go ahead, look. If you haven't already, go subscribe to the channel. Show him some love. Come on, man. W, man. He's real. I like that shit, bro. Because, you know, sometimes niggas be seeing me react to their shit and be fucking hoes, bro. They'll be like, oh, take, they copyright strike my video. Or, or like, bro, damn, bro, I fuck with the content, man. So, you know what? Shout out to this, bro. Nigga, you just sub. Nigga, you on my dick. This is my second YouTube. Thank you to every single one of you guys. Hold every on. Matter of fact. Yeah, get, get out of here. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And I wanted to help others. With you guys supporting this channel, now I'm able to do just that. So thank you. So this Twitch documentary is about to get crazy. So okay, stay till the end because we cover a list of topics and each topic just gets darker and darker. Live streaming is one of the most popular forms of entertainment on the internet. Countless people come together to watch their favorite streamers in real time. Whether they're opening a loot chest with the highest level of gear or just sitting in a bathtub, these streamers <laughs> rake in a crazy amount of viewers every day. When I said live streaming, what platform came to your mind? Of course, Twitch. Without a doubt, they are the streaming platform hosting some of the biggest streamers like Ninja, XQC, and Pokemon. Yes. Should've put Kai Sinat in the video, but it's okay, we forgive you. But there's more to Twitch than what's on the surface. Stalkers, manipulators, and some of the most disgusting people are on the platform. So join us as we explore the- He's gonna put my face in this shit and be like, and then there are the- the dark world of Twitch. The gambling controversy. Oh, this video? So whether you're for or Six against it, old. I think we can all agree that gambling can be dangerous. The rush of nigga didn't put Kai. I mean, I'm not gonna blame him, but eventually they need to start recognizing that the most like like everything, man. I hate to say it, but it's a takeover. We coming. I seen that Destiny shit talking about some black creators yell and scream at their cameras, and that's it. And I'd be like, yo. Like, I don't get it, bro. Why do you even say anything if you have no idea what you're talking about? Ironic. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, what? This shit's crazy, bro. Of dopamine is enough to get anyone hooked, even the people who you would least expect. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna shock all of you. I'm a gambling addict. Five years ago, it got so bad, I had $100 left in my bank account. And you know More than I have. You know what I did with that 100? I gambled it. Whenever gamblers lose, gambling organizations get paid. And trust me, gamblers will lose. In a slot machine, the chances of you winning the top prize is 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 34 million. And what happens when these gambling websites try to reach the younger generation? They branch out by sponsoring people to play their games. And these people are Twitch streamers. Some of the biggest streamers on Twitch were paid to gamble live on stream to their audience. They would play these games for their whole hordes of viewers and bet ridiculous amounts of money which was given to them by these gambling organizations. But because Aiden Ross leaked his DMs, we know they pay him at least four million dollars a month. These streamers spend 48 million a year off a sponsor alone and one sponsor alone is crazy. Not taking into his Twitch money, not taking in other sponsors or his YouTube. Oh my God, niggas making a hundred million in a year? Crazy. Hours and hours gambling oh, on stream that it becomes year? their own craving. Easily. So they do it off stream. Easily. Yeah, I'm, I'm addicted. I'm, I gamble every day. I lost two mils. Really? I lost 1.85 mils month. Because of this insane uptick in online gambling, Twitch faced one of their biggest controversies ever. In September of 2022, the streamer known as It Slicker 
was accused of scamming both his community and his friends for up to $300,000. Videos were leaked of him begging people for money. And I'll pay back. Jenny, give me two months and I can pay back. Slicker went on stream and admitted to everything. His reason for the scam was because his gambling problem was spiraling out of control. If gambling could cause this much damage to streamers, what can it do to its viewers? There Whatever happened to Slicker? Do people still fuck with him? Many kids on the platform. And no matter how hard a streamer can stress that they're streaming, he scammed the cancer patient? Dreams aren't Why would they? You know they'd be forgiven niggas. For children. He did scam Josh too, didn't he? They're gonna watch it anyway. Twitch has no age verification system. A kid can make an account with a fake birthday and watch whoever they want. So when they see their favorite streamer having so much fun and making money on these games, who's to say they won't try it themselves? According to the National Center of Responsible Gaming, the young people struggle with gambling at higher rates than older adults. And 75% of Twitch viewers are young. Twitch eventually came forward. 75% are between 16 and 34, 34 and young. Older adults. And 75% of Twitch. That's a big gap. That's an 18 year gap right there. Twitch yeah. viewers are young. Twitch eventually came forward with a new policy banning most gambling content, but sports betting is still allowed. So I want to ask you a question. Do you think Twitch has really done all they can to protect young people when they're still exposed to gambling? The downfall of a theme. In the late 2000s, Athene was one of the top content creators in the gaming community. He started off making videos of games like World of Warcraft, where he'd play an incredibly exaggerated character. People loved it, and Athene kept on growing. He took part in huge charity streams and raised insane amounts of money for charities like Save the Children. He even became one of their celebrity ambassadors. But in 2011, something shifted. Athene uploaded a weird video titled, Athene's Theory of Everything. The well, I feel like I heard that name before. The video was filled with religious preaching and strange conspiracy theories. His viewers were confused, but it would only get more confusing. Athene would continue to preach these strange views and would gaslight his audience if they didn't agree with him. And the funny thing, you'd feel more stable and more in balance with yourself than ever. If you're depressed, depression is gone. You know depression? You deserve depression. If you chase your own experience, knowing that it kills people you're in action, then maybe you deserve it. Athene would help create something called the Singularity Group. It was a compound for workers in the computing industry. They would move into the building with all their expenses like food and rent paid for and work on projects for Athene. But it was more than that. It was a cult. Not only would the workers not be paid for the work they did, but they would also have to sign an NDA which prevented them from questioning Athene or the organization. And if anyone did this, they would be shunned by the other members and become social outcasts. The environment was incredibly toxic and it shows nah, niggas got the Yo, Scum TK, do you gamble? No. In Athene's live streams. One of the worst moments was when he streamed with two female volunteers. He made them dance suggestively for the chat and promised that they would dance more if his audience would donate. And whichever girl got the most donations won. She's having some nice dance, nice moves. You're just sitting here like, you know, in the feet. You know, you can always give me a kiss on the cheek, you know. Cheat, 500 pounds, easy. <laughs> <laughs> for $200, it'd be dancing for an hour. So Athene exploited both his workers and, and his viewers. And as you'll see in this next topic, he's not the only one. This next situation is worse. Arcadum's allegations. Before we dive into Arcadum's disgusting allegations, I want to tell you guys about today's sponsor. This might currently... I'm sorry, no free yet. There's a wide variety of content on Twitch covering all kinds of niches and communities, such as the. Y'all want to know what my pastime after the gym is? We come home from the gym at like four o'clock. Me and the homies, after we we make our shakes and shit, we'll sit down in the living room and on the big screen we'll watch Twitch and we'll just scroll. We'll be we'll we'll, we'll we we be in Twitch trolling at four in the morning. And just chatting, feet up in the air, nah, feet on the table. Dungeons and Dragons or D&D Community, which is a role-playing game in a fantasy world. And one of the most popular streamers in this community was Arcado. This creator was respected in the community until it all came crashing down. Allegations started to come out about Arcadum from multiple young girls. They talked about his manipulative behavior toward them. Some even accused him of SA. But the craziest part is that there weren't just three or four allegations. But 21 different cases. But now it seems as if many different situations have come. 21 is a hard number to come back from. That's insane. 21 is fucking crazy, gangster. I can't lie to you. 21 is fucking 
insanity. Some delight as 21 different individuals in the space have come forward with their own stories. The cases were similar. Arcadum would have conversations with these girls through Discord. They would start friendships before Arcadum started to make advances on them. He would say things like, before you try to fall asleep, we could. It would help me relax. And when they refused- Before you try again, we could try it together. Huh? I mean, you might as well delete it. It's just us in the DMs. Exposes his DMs. This nigga's a sicko. Make advances on them. He would say things like, before you try to fall asleep, we could. It would help me relax. And when they refused, he guilt tripped them into pitying and forgiving him. I feel kind of guilty. I'm really sorry if I made things weird. I hope you get good sleep. He even tried to control their personal lives, saying things like, you're the only one I want. He manipulated them into believing that he was the only one who truly cared about them. Arcadum posted an apology in an attempt to fight off the backlash, but it just made things worse for him. I have seen receipts from these girls that was so bad they left them out of their tweet long. There was so much more evidence against Arcadum that the girls weren't showing. Since the controversy, Arcadum doesn't get nearly the attention he once got. I hope that this serves as a lesson for him and teaches others to be careful who they talk to online. But this isn't the only scandal like this on Twitch. Recently, there was an even bigger one. Adriana exposes Slick. So I want to make something clear about this next topic. Please don't take it as factual information. We did the best that we could and we tried to be as accurate as possible. But as you'll see, there's just too many layers to this story. It all started in 2021 when a streamer by the name of Adriana Lee came out with a story about an uncomfortable situation with a streamer named Crazy Slip. According to Adriana, she went to a birthday party and got so wasted that she ended up blacking out. Her friends helped her into a room so she could rest, but Crazy Slick entered the room despite being asked not to, then touched Adriana inappropriately. The news spread like wildfire. Mizkif, one of Crazy Slick's clo- Who was in the car? Closest friends went live to address the situation. We're very grateful to Adriana for doing the tweet that she did because she was- Your PR team gotta be fucking fired. She was forced into that position and she talked about her past experiences, which is super- I, I ain't gonna lie, I need they PR team. They PR team, crazy. I need they PR team for when the big girls come to me. When I get big enough and they bring up my tweets or my uh, my videos about big women, they gonna make me shake Lizzo hand. Super brave and really, really hard to- Me and Lizzo gonna do a, a, a collab and we gonna be like, I stand with y'all. Ms. Kiff had a Twitter argument with another streamer named Trainwreck, and this story got much worse. Trainwreck accused Ms. Kiff of covering up not just the Adriana situation, but many other cases of crazy slick harassing women on Twitch. Are you gonna send Maya and Mitch to blackmail me like you did those girls to cover up all those SAs? More evidence surfaced against Ms. Kiff, including a clip from his stream. Of what you can deem of it, it's of harassment, whatever, at a low scale, it's not really a big deal. Uh, I don't think people really gave a sh and really cared. Adriana then went live and revealed that Ms. Kiff himself sent someone to talk to her. They allegedly told Adriana to cover up what Crazy Slick has done. Ms. sent the most credible- Got him. We fucking got him. Well, nicest girl on Twitch to talk to me instead of him going over there, because it would look better. Be he said Pokemon? It was Maya? Who the hell is Maya? It'd be better to convince me. What's worse is that Adriana's statement had to be proofread multiple times in order to make sure that the situation was downplayed as much as possible. At this point, Adriana was shunned from the Twitch community because many people didn't think it was a big deal. But nah, shunning her and sending the label, they doing them motherfucker crazy. They doing that motherfucker crazy. Then Shunning her, they was like, yeah. They put that, they chat, they pulled up on with the click and was like, you better, you better take that shit out. OTK the mom? Y'all getting niggas to retract statements? OTK the mom? The Twitch crime family, OTK. And someone else came forward, and it was by accident. Minx's accident. Just the Minx is a popular content creator and Twitch streamer. If you fuck. They're my dog! Chat, I don't know if y'all remember, but like 2020. There was a clip of her, like, I forget what she did, but she reacted to me. 
And I was wearing all blue and she asked if I was a crip. And I was like, yo, Nick's cool though. She's cool people. She's cool people. Follow her, you'll be aware that she recently suffered a manic episode, which is a period of extreme changes in mood and behavior. During this episode, Minx reacted to Adriana's stream and just laughed at her essay situation with Slip. She did not reply. <laughs> She doesn't have screenshots. But then her opinion changed. I was influenced by friends to believe that what happened to Adriana was smaller than what it actually was. So pay attention carefully because this next clip reveals the puzzle piece that puts this all together. Not everyone's a f like these f streamers that cover it up, aka me and OTK. Ooh, shut up. <laughs> She still got your cosign? I don't know this woman, nigga. I know her based off what I know her, nigga. I don't be on the internet doing that shit. You niggas formulating opinions off of shit niggas tell you. I don't be trusting none of this shit. Minx. Yeah, yeah, see, see, see. It's confirmed completely by accident that some people were actively trying to cover up what happened to Adriana. And as far as I know, the situation is still under legal investigation. This controversy wasn't Twitch's fault, but the fault of the people with a presence on Twitch. We look up to these influencers and idolize them, but we forget they're human too. Facts. Sweet Anita pleads for help. When we think of stalking, we think of that one shady guy in the alley following a woman home. But stalking can start online too. Almost all of your favorite Twitch streamers- Who idolizes them? Let's be honest. I'm looking through chat right now and I see a bunch of condones, D.O., rage. Let, let's, let's stop it, okay? I see a scum JQ. Let's, let's, just, let's just call it what it is, bro. You know what I mean? Never idolized a person in my life. Izzy, if I go through your shit right now, how many times has he mentioned Bruce or Rage or Aiden or Speed? Members have stories about being stalked, including the horrifying situation of Sweet Anita. Sweet Anita is a massive streamer on Twitch who's even hosted the Streamer Awards. Yes. Love you, too. Sweet Anita spoke openly about her experience with stalkers on Twitch. She said that the stalking started in October of 2019 and escalated consistently. One day I went to the shops. He followed me from my house to the shops. Um, I asked him if he had a knife this time. He stayed silent. Went across the road. And as I crossed the road, he gave chase. He ran after me. So um, the people from the shop charged out, grabbed hold of him and pinned him down while I went and, you know, went through this gate and went home and they held the gate closed so he couldn't get past them and he was trying to push them out the way and actually fighting with them to get with me. It sadly wasn't long before the stalker found Anita's house. My stalker like started following me like, around okay, bro. and sleep. Do niggas not like, you know what? I, I can't hold niggas to the standards that I hold myself because a lot of niggas aren't, you know what I mean? In my back garden, he started staring through my letterbox. On top of that, the stalker would constantly send Anita threats through her Twitch chat and the police didn't do anything about it. They didn't turn up for 30 minutes. And even then they didn't actually turn up. What they did was ring me back after 30 minutes to explain why they weren't gonna do anything to help me. Even when Anita was assaulted by her stalker with a witness, nothing was done. According to Anita, when the police finally took action against the stalker, he was on the way to her house. When they finally went out to pick him up off the street to question him about that incident, he was actually on his way to my house with a knife. And despite that being incredibly damning, they still released him a three minute walk away from my house. The saddest part is that despite all the awareness that Anita brought to this subject, she's still the target of stalking to this day. On May 23rd of I this year, say, Anita posted- What I will say is women in the content creating slash other industries, you got it tough. I'm not gonna lie, you do have it tough. I understand that, that's hard. And really and truly, y'all need to be protected. Women don't deserve to have to live in fear because of the profession they choose, you feel me? Whether that be OnlyFans, porn, Twitch, con any form of content creating, they, they need to be respected and treated like the human beings they are. And if we're being honest, I think it's unfair and unjust that they have to deal with this. And I need to see change from Twitch to counteract situations like this. I stand with women.
posted a tweet pleading for help because another stalker threatened to find her at TwitchCon. I don't want to hurt you or your security. This is complicated. Last week, I could have sworn you would want to have a romantic relationship with me. And this week, I think you might have changed your mind. So Anita's stalkers are getting completely out of hand, but this next one is probably the worst one I've researched so far. Scariest stalker on Twitch. Another big streamer on the platform is Amaranth. While she's definitely been in some controversy for her content, she's widely respected on a personal level by Twitch and content creators. And this made her a target for one of the worst stalker cases on Twitch. Amaranth tweeted this message. She says that her stalker traveled from Estonia, came to her city and camped out in a hotel with a line of sight to her P.O. box and spent over a month camping out daily at a Starbucks next to the P.O. box and streamed it the entire time. The stalker knew that Amaranth would eventually visit the address, so he waited there for over a month. And despite- That is insane. Like, that's fucking crazy. Twitch taking down his account, he just kept making new ones. And if that wasn't enough, he would constantly harass Amaranth online. He would send her inappropriate videos of himself dancing, and when she told him to stop, he just laughed and responded, liar liar fiance. This went on for weeks until the stalker started to move again. He streamed himself walking outside of Amaranth's home, mumbling to himself. This is wrong, he said. I know this is wrong, but I have to. He was dressed in formal clothes, carrying an instrument instrument case. And an instrument case is the perfect shape to hide something dangerous. Then the that nigga had the blick in that motherfucker. Happened. He started to break in. Amranth called 911 and the police took 33 minutes to respond. Thankfully, the stalker was eventually caught. Something needs to change. It's only a matter of time before one of these guys does something irreversible. And in this next one, they actually do. You can't unsee this live stream. In May of 2022, PG, an 18-year-old boy, drove over 200 miles to a supermarket in Buffalo. He got out of the car strapped up and ended the lives of 10 people. And the whole thing was live on Twitch. Twitch stopped the live stream minutes after the incident began. It was a horrific event that happens all too often, but I'm glad Twitch stood up and did their part to shut down the live stream. But still, evil people slipped through Twitch's cracks, including a Twitch admin who abused his power. The criminal admin. In 2013, there was a Twitch admin by the name of Mr. Adder. During that time, he took advantage of two small streamers who were both young girls. It's possible that there are more victims who haven't come forward yet, but in 2020, the two girls spoke out. One of the victims claimed that she met Mr. Adder when he was in his early mid 20s while she was about 10 years younger. He used his recent breakup to guilt trip her into talking to him. He threatened her into doing unspeakable acts because if she didn't do them, he would hurt himself. And sometimes he actually would. She finally had- Rest in peace to all those victims from Buffalo. I, I sympathize with women because they are the empathetic so sex and you know, you don't want to be a dickhead and you don't want to be the person that tells people, you know, like, yeah, but anytime, like, listen, any ladies in my chat, take this advice from me. Any lame ass nigga threatening to hurt himself or do some nut shit to himself because he thinks you don't love him, fuck that nigga. I'm not telling you to tell that nigga to do anything, but listen, everybody has their own life to live. Don't feel like you're obligated to save anybody. You're not a fucking superhero. You're not a fucking savior, right? Like, come on, bro. Don't ever let anybody put you in a position where you're vulnerable and they can take advantage of you because they're trying to because you're trying to prevent them from hurting themselves. Had the courage to notify Twitch, but when she did, nothing happened. His other victim had a similar story. She was manipulated into a relationship with him and was pressured into doing horrific acts. She even sent him money for food and cigarettes when she was about half his age. This admin that was supposed to uphold the values of safety was nothing more than a creep. The Twitch Monster. In 2015, a Twitch streamer by the name of Dark Aquas engaged in a relationship with a young girl when he was over 21. This girl claims that he manipulated her into a deal where she would do anything he asked, and in return, he would listen to her family problems. The messages he sent to this person are disgusting. He would force her to skip class in school and call him in the bathroom, and he would make her do awful things for him. This girl had enough and decided to act. 
but Dark Aquas knew their address and threatened her sister. Thankfully, this young girl was able to break free and come forward with her story. On Twitch, these stories are endless, including someone who took it a step further. The Dark Mind of Cryotic. Cryotic was one of the biggest content creators in the early years of YouTube. He was well known for his early collabs with PewDiePie and his- Ain't this Ice Poseidon? What? Wait, 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 wait. Who is this nigga? PewDiePie? Oh, this PewDiePie? Iconic voice. How old am I? I see you- Oh, that's not the same person? Don't fully grasp the concept of eternity. He would stream playthroughs of games on- Why y'all saying, come on, TK, like I'll be on YouTube and shit? Like I was on the internet. I don't know who the fuck that is. When will I have ever watched a PewDiePie video? On Twitch and had a huge following. Until 2020. Cry released a video where he admitted to cheating on his girlfriend with multiple girls who were too young. I was never able to be genuine with people anymore after the fact that I cheated on my girlfriend with people who I didn't realize were even a in the first place. This shocked and confused his followers, and this was only just the surface. When Cryotic started dating his girlfriend Cheyenne, she herself was a young girl and a victim of Cry's abuse. There were also accounts from Cry's friends that he was doing ERP with young girls. Some of the screenshots uncovered this is were just fucking crazy. Disgusting, and it revealed Did just said get older. My nigga, what? how sick Cry really was. Since his last video in 2020, Cry hasn't uploaded to Twitch or YouTube, and there are rumors that he's even being investigated by the FBI. Cry's story is only one of the thousands on Twitch. On September 21st of this year, Bloomberg released an article that revealed one of Twitch's darkest sides. A researcher conducted a two-year investigation and discovered just how many Preds use Twitch to find their victims. The data will shock you. The researchers monitored over 1,900 accounts. These accounts exclusively followed children who streamed on Twitch. These users would join the children's streams and manipulate them into doing suggestive dances and acts. In total, these preds targeted 279,000 kids. You niggas who be in these chats talking about some shake ass. Shake ass. He's talking about you niggas. Shake ass. You petite brown skin ebony i just want to see his shake he's talking about you niggas and as of July 2022, Preds found an average of 673 kids every single day. How did this happen? Even if Twitch removes these shady accounts, nothing is stopping them from making another one. Something needs to change before it's too late. You not a kid though? I'm not a kid, but I'm a victim. But I think it's already too late. But that doesn't mean they've won. If you see people online doing things that hurt others, report it. If you see it in real life, do the same. I know that alone we can only do little, but if we stand together, we can do so much. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, click this playlist right here to watch more dark internet documentaries. Because our new goal is five. W video.